Today in our 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 3500, we're going to take a look at and show you how to install the BMW Heavy Duty Class 5 trailer hitch receiver. Offering a 2 inch by 2 inch opening, its part number is BWHDRH25600. Now this is what our hitch is going to look like installed. As you can see, a really clean look. Our cross tube is going to stay mainly hidden back behind the bumper area there. Got our safety chain connection points that are going to come down on an angle, so these should be easy to get to, easy to connect our chains to. Then you'll see that reinforcement collar welded around the end of the hitch, going to give us superior durability. Now I like this hitch because it's rated for class 5, but it's got the 2 inch by 2 inch receiver tube opening, so this is going to allow it to have a lot more adaptability. You can use class 3 bike racks or cargo carriers or class 3 rated accessories in it as long as they're rated for the capacities in which you want to tow and haul. If you're going to use it to its fullest potential, then you'll want to use a 2-inch Class 5 rated ball mount or something that's rated up to the capacities you intend to haul. But it's rated very highly as far as tow weights and tow ratings go, so this is going to be a very good hitch for those heavy-duty towing jobs. When you've got a big trailer and big equipment, we need to get it from point A to point B. It's going to be a great solution. It's going to use a 5 8 diameter pinhole, so we can use class 3, class 4, class 5 accessories. Again, you just want to make sure that weight rating is appropriate for the weight that you intend to haul. The hitch itself is rated for up to 1,600 pounds worth of tongue weight. That would be the maximum downward force that we can put here at our receiver tube opening. And it gives us a 16,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That would be the total weight of our trailer and then anything that we are to load up on it. Now that, those ratings are going to be the same whether we're using weight distribution or not. And you'll just want to make sure that the truck's rated for that amount as well. So you'll look into the owner's manual on that, see what its tow rating is, then just go off of whichever of those are going to be the lowest. Now a couple measurements that are helpful for selecting ball mounts, bike racks, or hitch cargo carriers will be from the ground to the inside top edge of a receiver tube opening. We've got about 22 inches. Then from the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost edge of our bumper, it's about one and a half. Now to begin our installation, we need to get our side plates installed onto the cross member there. These are just going to go right over the end of the hitch there. You see the cross tube is actually going to come out through them. Then we're going to take our inch and a half bolts. These are M12s. We're going to slide those through. We'll have four locations here to do that in. And we'll want to place on a lock washer and one of our hex nuts on each of our bolts there. Just want the side plate lip or that flange to be facing out away from the hitch. Now we'll snug these down. We're going to use a 19 do that for our other side. Now on each side of our frame rail there's going to be an M14 bolt here in the very back. Uh, there, you, you can see our customer already removed his hitch out of here just to give us some room. But we want to get those removed on both sides. Now with an extra set of hands we'll get our hitch raised up into position here. And the forward attachment point here in the flange we're going to replace that 14 millimeter bolt that we removed on each side. Once we have that threaded in there with three or four good turns, we'll just let our hitch rest there. Now we're going to take one of our longer hex head bolts. That's going to go down through both of our attachment points. The nice thing about it is the frame's already pre-drilled, so we can bring those right down through without too much of an issue. Now there's another spacer plate that needs to go on. We'll follow that up with a lock washer and then one of our hex nuts. Now we're going to do that for our three remaining locations, two on each side. Now as we get our other hardware put in place, we're going to use the larger spacer block to go inside of the frame rail. Bring that down through. Then you're going to have the smaller spacer block that will go on the bottom side here. So it's just kind of offset a little bit. That goes on. We've got our locking washer that's going to go on, then our hex nut. Now we're going to do this for the one remaining location that we have on this side. 
which will be the pole that's just a little further forward in the hitch. And then we'll need to go over to the passenger side and do the two over there. All right, now we'll snug down our hardware. Now for the hex bolt, you're likely going to need an opened in box wrench just to put in there and I'll keep it from spinning. It's going to be a 19 millimeter, same as the hex bolt or the hex nut. All right, now we're going to head around and torque down all of our fasteners to the frame here. The instructions will have the appropriate torque specifications listed for you, so just go by those. All right, now once we've got all of those torqued down on the outside, we want to check the line between the cross member and our side plates. We want to make sure that these line up really well, that we can snug down these bolts the rest of the way and we'll torque those to the appropriate specifications as well. All right, with all those torqued down properly, our hitch is ready for use. With everything torqued down to specification, that's gonna complete our installation of the B&W Heavy Duty Trailer Hitch Receiver, Class 5 rated, part number BW HDRH 25600 on our 2014 Chevrolet Silverado 3500. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.